Now as it dips down, 21 degrees the windshield. The wind, only nine miles an hour. Let's go down on the field and Bonnie Bernstein. Well, Dick, a blow for the Steelers. We know Jerome Bettis will not start. Bill, does Jerome have a chance to play at all today? No, Jerome's out. It's unfortunate, but like I told the team, you know, last time we played these guys, we didn't have Jerome either. We got Fu, who's healthy. We got Amos, who's coming back healthy. We'll go with those two, and uh, like I said, we didn't have him the last time. We don't have him today. We'll win this one for him. Coach, thank you. Yeah, so with all the buildup and the return of Betta, so they carefully trained for three weeks. He got better and better, told us during the week that he was 100%. He said he's passed all the tests, and then an errant needle keeps him out of the game. Yeah, and don't anybody think that there's some sort of a conspiracy here? We watched the Steelers practice the other day. We saw Jerome Bettis going at full speed, and they had every intention of him being here, of him being effective today. So this wasn't any sort of, uh, of undercover plot by the Steelers. Jermaine Lewis. Bill Cower mentioned he's the player he worries most about today. His great kick returns, and he takes it at the two-yard line. The mighty might of the Ravens at the 21, breaks out of a tackle and slips down at the 26. Elvis Gerbach in his first year with the Ravens, replacing Trent Dilfer, the man from Michigan, the only quarterback in the playoffs with more interceptions than touchdowns. He has been uh, dilferized, as they've said it, because of the running game. The last two contests for the Ravens being so effective, they've not needed him to make the big play. But he's told us he has to come up with sevens in the red zone. Threes aren't going to be good enough. Terry Allen is his running back, and it's Allen on first down. He picks up a couple. Casey Hampton, the rookie tackle and Kimo von Olhoffen with a stop. Here's the starting lineup for the defending champions. Ogden the pro bowler with Mulatalo, Flynn, Anderson the rookie and Vickers up front. Terry Allen the 33 year old veteran finding new life here in the playoffs. Gash is the blocker. Ismael has had big games against the Steelers. Taylor coming alive in the playoffs in the tight end all pro Shannon Sharp. Brian Billick in his third season. The give is to Jason Brookins and Brookins the first year runner from Lane College is stuffed by Kendrell Bell, the NFL Defensive Rookie of the Year. The 3 4 base for Pittsburgh features Smith, Hampton, the rookie, and Von Olhoffen up front. Great linebacking core. Gilden, Holmes, Bell, and Porter. Porter wearing 55, the number of sacks this year for Pittsburgh to lead the league. Scott Alexander, Flowers, and Washington, the back four. Third down and six. Mo Williams and I am Badejo. And oh, what a block on the blitz. And then Gerback throws it up, going to be intercepted. Chad Scott, 50 yard line, looks for a block at the 45. And Pittsburgh has the turnover at the Ravens 42. Brian Billick has to be thinking, Elvis, what were you doing? That looked more like a punt than a pass. Here's a great block right there, but Elvis has plenty of time. He gets hit right in the hip at the last moment as he's releasing the ball. But you know the pressure is there. You know it's coming. Travis Taylor, and he has no opportunity to come back for that ball that was underthrown by a good 10 yards. Scott with the five interceptions led the Steelers in the regular season. And what an athletic play by Porter to be somersaulted on the block, still got up and put the pressure on Gerbach. Cordell Stewart tosses to Zeroway at the 35, and he's hammered by Corey Harris at the 32 yard line, a gain of 12. First down for Pittsburgh. Oh my, what a start to this game. Here's the starting lineup for Cordell Stewart and uh, the Steelers as Stewart shows these numbers and they're very good. In fact, 60% is the best ever completion percentage by a Pittsburgh Steeler quarterback and he's even better against Baltimore this year with three touchdowns and no interceptions in the two games played earlier in the season. Each team winning on the road. Stewart draw. <laughs> 30. Outside, cuts back 25, 20 yard line, and another Pittsburgh first down. Ray Lewis tripped him up. 
Well, we know with the absence of the bus, some of that burden of running the football is going to have to be picked up by Cordell Stewart. A design play all the way. He follows Chris Fuamatu Maafala right up into the hole. They've been working on this for a couple of weeks, and we'll see it multiple times today. When you're in the secondary, you see the last running back pass the quarterback. You immediately think it's no longer a running play, and then here comes Cordell Stewart right up into the hole. Look at those numbers running on the year. 537 yards, a rushing record for the Steelers as a quarterback to throw wide open underneath. It is a complete to Bobby Shaw, who had a 90-yard touchdown catch against Baltimore at the Ravens' home field, and it's another first down as the Steelers oh. rattling up big yards on every play. And did you see Hines Ward come back and make a block that allowed Bobby Shaw to pick up about another five yards? A strike from Stewart right to Shaw, but watch from the left. Here comes Hines Ward right there. He picks off Corey Harris, and that allows Shaw to get another couple yards. The best blocking wide receiver in football is Hines Ward, and there's a good example right there. This is a team when you talk about the Steelers. First and goal from the six. Fumato Mafala, and he's to the four-yard line with a crowd uh, chanting foo as he takes the handoff, and Ray uh, Lewis said only a few as he gains two. The Ravens have not allowed a first quarter touchdown in the last 11 games and again they have not allowed a playoff touchdown in 54 possessions. Well remember this is just about the way it got started in the game against Miami. They fumble the opening kickoff. Miami has to settle for only a field goal. So again this is a Ravens defense that's used to adversity. They're used to their offense putting them in awkward spots. And the Steelers have not been an effective team in the red zone this year. And off inside, and it goes uh, for just a couple of yards to John Whitman, who had carried the ball only five times all season. So uh, Bill Cower trying to catch the Ravens off by giving to the fullback. Here's the starting lineup with Gandy, Fanica to the Pro Bowl, Hardings, Tilski, and Smith with uh, Bettis unable to start. It's Chris Fuamatuma Afala. Whitman the blocker, Burris the 6'6 wide receiver, Heinz Ward. Many felt he should have gone to the Pro Bowl, and uh, Jeremy Tooman the tight end. Third and goal. And off to Fumatuma Fala, and it's not there. Jamie Sharper, the outside linebacker with Ray Lewis at his side to dump him for no gain, and out comes the field goal unit. And of course, that's part of the story as well. It most certainly is. Once again, this Raven defensive unit has risen to the challenge of having to defend a very short field. Look at this. It appears there's a crease, but then look at that. At the last minute, there's Sharper, there's Lewis. There's Anthony Mitchell, a trio of Ravens stuff it. And Chris Brown, who missed four field goals against the Ravens in the regular season, lines that one through, and the Steelers settle for three. Interception by Scott, three for Pittsburgh. Oh, and he looks at that. Helmet heaters. Whoa. <laughs> What's next? A moral victory for the Ravens defense uh, holding the Steelers to the field goal when they had first and goal at the six and Jermaine Lewis fields it at the 10 yard line. Looks for a crease and is surrounded by black and gold at the 26 yard line and Mike Logan led the charge. Oh timeout here at Heinz Field. The early going 858 left in the opening quarter. overview of this beautiful new facility the southern end to the river end of the stadium of course is basically open and that's been the uh, end of the field that has caused the field goal kickers considerable trouble both college and professional kickers only 52 percent of field goals tried on this field new field this year have been successful Brown making the first field goal 21 yards into the closed end. Jason Brookins the tailback and he takes the handoff and tries the left side behind the all pro Jonathan Ogden number 75 and picks up about three. Uh, you're talking about power football when you're talking about Jason Brookins carrying the ball. 
Brookins at about 240, but then coming in behind Ogden and Edwin Mulatalo, both of whom go about 340. Although I think uh, Mulatalo, uh, if you can say a guy's fudging at 340, I'd say Edwin is. I, I think he's closer to 360. On second down, Gerbach throws over the middle, complete, and hit immediately as Travis. No, make that Terry Allen out of the backfield. Allen short of the first down as the tackle by Kendrell Bell. Let's go down to B squared. Well, Dick, one of the biggest Ravens fans is not on hand today. Team owner Art Modell could not make the trip. Ordinary, he flies in on a private jet the morning of the game. But there were technical problems with his plane, and because of the snowstorm up and down the East Coast, and Baltimore got seven inches, they couldn't get another jet in. So he's just going to have to settle for watching this one on the big screen at home, Dick. All right, Bonnie, third and a long one. There's the blitz, and it's successful as Mike. Jones, a backup linebacker, the veteran from Missouri, and that's the Blitzburg game. There it is. You talk about the Pittsburgh game. Both the left guard and left tackle turn to the outside. It, that's a case where the Steelers just send one more rusher than there is blocker. And when it's up the pipe, the quarterback has very little chance to do much about it. Of course, everybody remembers Mike Jones from the tackle two years ago for the Rams when he stopped Kevin Dyson at the one yard line in the Rams Super Bowl victory. Kyle Richardson does get the kick away and Troy Edwards waits for Pittsburgh at the 35. Slip drops the ball without being hit. He just fumbled it out of his own hands and he's lucky to recover as uh, Brad Jackson for Baltimore was right there as well. And a frightening moment that quieted this noisy Steeler crowd. There's a flag, Dick, uh, right down here sitting at about the 37. The illegal use of the yeah. hands, hands in the back penalty. No, now it's signaled against the Ravens. Tony Corrente, an educator, is our referee today. Billick and Cower, and Bill Cower now the dean of NFL coaches, 10 seasons. During the kick, illegal use of the hands, hands of the face, offense, number 24. This penalty has been accepted. 10 yards will repeat, fourth down. Well, that's a smart move by Bill Cower, forcing the Ravens to punt again. They got nothing on the return because of Edwards letting the ball go and just having to fall on it so back him up 10 yards make him sprint one more time down the field. We'll uh, we'll see if this works out but I think that's a an awfully good call by Bill Cower. Let's take a look at the penalty on the kick Alvin Porter number 24. <laughs> he's got that uh, he's got that left arm right up in the throat. So the penalty marks it back to the 15 yard line. So Richardson will deliver from about the five. Edwards had an 81 yard return against Baltimore back in November. Here they come. And he gets it away successfully. A bad kick. And makes a Baltimore roll and finally out of bounds at the Pittsburgh 48 yard line. 36 yards. On the punt, but still a gamble that pays off for the Steelers. They get much better field position. And the Ravens defense buckles it on, and uh, here we go again as Pittsburgh moved it at ease down inside the 10 yard line on their first possession, but unable to come up with seven, and the score is 3 0. Amos Zeroway in the backfield now. Him in the tight end in motion. Zeroway, the former West Virginia star. He's inside the 45 to the 44 and a gain of nearly eight. Take a look at the starting defense for the Baltimore Ravens with veteran Burnett, the big guys in the middle, Adams and Siragusa, and Peter Bolware, se second best sacker in the league, uh, 15 on the year. Jackson, Lewis, and Sharper. Lewis, of course, to another Pro Bowl, their top tackler. Starks and McAllister at the corners. Former Steeler Rod Woodson to his 10th Pro Bowl, and Corey Harris joins him at safety. 
Marvin Lewis, the defensive coordinator for Baltimore. Why isn't he being mentioned for one of those open vacancies as a head coach? Stewart, plenty of time. Zips it long for Bruce. Incomplete. Double covered as Harris came over to assist Chris McAllister. Well, there's a, a change of pace. The double coverage that time on Plexico Burris. The last time these two teams played, it, the, the double coverage was all over Hines Ward, and Plex burned him for big yardage, 180 some yards. So now I see that the big man is uh, going to warrant a little more attention from this Raven secondary. Burris and Ward combined for a thousand yards each on the season. That's the first time it's ever happened. Uh, for the Pittsburgh Steelers and when you think of Swan and Stallworth that great combo uh, that's quite a quite a fact although they have those were primarily 14 game seasons that two more games to work up the yard. This one to Burris a push off is it against the offense to the defense as Burris makes the catch in front of Chris McAllister and they may get Burris for the push off. This uh, there was contact and it was awfully close. Oh, they're going to call it against the Ravens. Plexico Burris, a big man. Illegal use of the hands, hands to the face. Defense number 21. Penalty is declined. The result of the play, first down. Brian Billick told us that Chris McAllister wasn't physical. Oh, there it is right there. That's it. That shot to the face mask. You see the little shove there by Burris, but that penalty was right at the line of scrimmage. You can get that shot that's perfectly legal but you just can't do it into the face mask. But he told us Chris McAllister just was not physical enough with Plexico Burris last game. Well good shot but poorly aimed. And quickly caught by the officials so it's a first down outside the 26 as Stewart winds up fires down the middle complete. Jeremy Tuman the tight end. Corey Harris with a jolting tackle but Tuman holds on it's first and goal again. Cordell Stewart working the middle of the football field Hines Ward into the zone coverage and what a shot he takes from Corey Harris. Boy that was but again look at the ball thrown by Cordell Stewart. His involvement in this season into a complete NFL quarterback has been a joy to watch. A award showing you how tough he is, not only as a blocker, but taking the hit after the catch. Zero A breaks out of a tackle, but they have him hemmed in, and a flag goes down, and that's where you would suspect a face mask as Brad Jackson made the Bulldog tackle. Well, and all of a sudden, Brian Billick is seeing something he's not used to seeing, his defense making it easier for an offensive team, and that's the big one. You got the five-yard garden variety and the 15-yarder. Of course, it'll only be half the distance to the goal line at this position on the field. Boy, Brian Billick knows his offense is not a real catch-up offense. Personal foul, grabbing the face mask, defense number 50. The penalty will be set back to the goal. Automatic first down. Boy, there's a good look at it. Jackson holds on, actually pulls the head down. Although I hated to talk about Baltimore not really having a catch-up offense at Heinz Field. That was not. It's, it's really not. I, I didn't mean that. It was a mistake. Agonizing on the sidelines, Billick, as he sees the Steelers with another first and goal from the five. Away. Behind blocking. But the close down as Sharper comes in along with Ray Lewis and Peter Kohler was down low to make the initial contact. Well, these are two teams. These are two teams that make a hole disappear in a hurry. It looks like there's a crease. Look at the wave. Wayne Gandy out in front. It looks like the hole is there, but what flow, what speed by the Baltimore defenders? Two of the fastest defensive teams I have seen in a long time right here. When you're talking about linebackers flowing to the hole, nobody in this league does it quicker than the units, both units you're going to see on display today. One yard away from a touchdown on second and goal. Zero away. Second effort, touchdown. Steeler 
possessions, two impressive short drives, and 10 points. Yes, well, the extra point is good. Bouncing off tackles and running over people in short yardage situation, you'd think would either be Bettis or Fool Matumafa. Not famous Amos, the smallest of the Steeler backs. Brown with the extra point. And the Steeler fans celebrate here in the opening quarter. 51 yards and seven plays, zero away. Punches it in from one yard out, and it's 10-0 Pittsburgh. had that one looked like he was going to get their way and then sometimes it doesn't work out because of your own guys getting in the way. Oh 10 nothing Steelers here in the opening quarter as Chris Brown kicks it to Lewis. Jermaine Lewis drifts to the side and takes it at the seven behind the wedge at the 25 has a crease caught and down at the 34 yard line uh, as uh, John Fiala it's appropriate here at Heinz Field that number 57 should make a tackle 339 left in this opening quarter. Reflected in those uh, numbers as uh, Pittsburgh uh, moving quickly into scoring position and an early 10 nothing lead and the Ravens need to show something in this possession don't you think. Well the Ravens have to stop making mistakes. An interception and a couple defensive penalties have been a big help to the Steelers. Empty backfield. Gerbach throws on first down and completes for short yardage. Travis Taylor, who had 42 catches on the regular season and a budding star. He was their number one pick a year ago. Well, Dick, you know, players didn't talk 20 years ago the way they talk now. And some games, there's more than others. This was a pretty good week. <laughs> Back and forth. Lincoln Douglas. Yes. Plenty yeah. of debate. Oh, there from Shannon Sharp to Lee Flowers. To, it was, uh, this was an active talking week. On second down, the handoff to Brookens. And he burrows to the 40 yard line, leaving Baltimore four yards shy of a first down and third coming up. Lee Flowers made the point, and Lee is a strong safety for the Steelers that. He thinks when he watches tape that a lot of teams are afraid of the Ravens that physically they go into the game wondering if they're strong enough to go toe to toe with these guys and Lee Flowers said look we got over that a long time ago. They're just another team as far as we're concerned. Well here in the FC Central the Steelers have won their last five games at Baltimore Ravens have won the last three times here. It's third and four Gerbach under pressure. Now it Releases to the sideline incomplete that ball flying wide in the wind intended for Taylor. Well he couldn't get it in there anyway. Chad Scott had all sorts of coverage. I think Elvis just threw that away. He had all sorts of time but nobody got open against the Steelers secondary. Scott whose interception on the first series of this game uh, sparked the Steelers to that quick field goal and here's Richardson running it to Troy Edwards, perhaps the fastest of the Steeler wide receivers, and Thick Returner is taking over for Hank Poteet, pretty close to a block. And the ball bounds Baltimore's way and out of bounds around the 24 yard line. Mike Logan, the safety, was the man. There he is, number 31, wearing Donnie Shell's old number. Shell, one of the uh, 15 men considered for the Professional Football Hall of Fame, the final 15, as uh, well, they're kind of excited here in Pittsburgh because there are three Steelers on that list. As you said, Donnie Shell, but L.C. Greenwood is one of the guys. In fact, there is the aforementioned Donnie Shell, a member of that famous Steel Curtain defense, as was L.C. Greenwood, the best pass rusher, and John Stallworth, the compliment to Lynn Swan, also a, a candidate, as is Art Modell, the owner of the Baltimore Ravens, and uh, prior to that, uh, the Cleveland Browns for over 40 years in this league. On first down, Zeroway is stuffed as Suragusa almost beating the snap on uh, that particular play. You know, earlier today here in Pittsburgh, the NFL Gatorade Punt Pass and Kit Competition held their national finals. And coming up at the end of the third quarter, the National Football League and Gatorade will recognize the national champions during an awards presentation. These are the eight young uh, boys and girls out of over uh, three and a half million who started the competition that we'll be honoring later. A loss of a yard, second and 11. 
Stewart. Sideline, and it's intercepted. A diving catch by Dwayne Starks. He's at the 10. No, it's McAllister, and McAllister is out of bounds at the seven-yard line. A shoestring pick by Chris McAllister, who had only one interception all season, makes a beautiful move on the ball. When a severely underthrown ball by Cordell Stewart. It, it, it's a simple pattern. Now, yeah, McAllister gets a great break on the ball, but the ball is severely underthrown. I, I don't, he's trying to get it out to Matt Cushing, but look how th th that ball has no chance of getting out to Cushing. You know, the crowd really wondering whether that was a trap. We'll get a good look at it here. Uh, I think McAllister's got his hands underneath that. We may get a challenge, but that. It looks to me like that was a legitimate interception by Chris McAllister. It happened on the sideline of the Steelers, so Bill Cower had a pretty good angle and has challenged. Well, they, it certainly happened right. right. The couple of looks that we got at it, it looked as if McAllister had his hands and his forearm underneath the football. Let's try uh, another look. Mike Arnold, our director, Lance Barrow, our producer, they're looking quick. You see, I think that's a legitimate, at least from that angle, that looks like an awfully good play by Chris McAllister. And remember, it's ruled an interception on the field. So we're going to have to have some very definitive evidence shown to Tony Carrente that he can overturn it. Yeah, we can't help but think back to that incredible drama of last night in Foxborough in the snow and the the tuck rule being uh, enforced, as you see there. Now I, that just—he's got his hands underneath it, though. That—that that to me just—that looks like a perfect interception by McAllister. I, he it, it just everything I see. Of course, there's the only guy who has a vote. This is. Not a democracy. This is a dictatorship, and Tony Carrente is the only man who has a vote. Callister playing center field, uh, scooping that ball off the top of the grass, and we'll see if there was any evidence there that caught Carrente's eye for an overrule or whether it's first and goal at the seven. After reviewing the play, the Baltimore defender cradled the ball with both hands underneath him, the ball never hitting the ground. Therefore, the interception ruling is correct. First down, Baltimore. Pittsburgh will be charged with the timeout. So a tight turning play by McAllister. Well, lost, uh, you know, we look so much studying that. We have to remember the Cordell Stewart, who has played two tremendous games so far this year against the Baltimore Ravens. That is his first egregious error. That, that was just not a good throw at all. Now the pressure on the Steelers' defense to hold Baltimore seven yards away from a score. And uh, off. Too quickly was Kip Vickers, number 77. False start. Offense, number 77. Five yard penalty remains first down. Well, it's down around the goal line. You get excited. Kind of tough. There's a, a big head start. That's the difference between the first hut and the second hut. <laughs> That's, and if you think the crowd noise was loud before, get a load of this. Gives to the veteran Terry Allen and Allen maybe a yard into the teeth of that Pittsburgh defense. Joey Porter and no way. Back to the interception real quickly Dan that's the 12th interception by Baltimore in six postseason games going back to last year in this they have 12 interceptions and have not allowed a touchdown pass. Thus they are Super Bowl champions with a relatively pedestrian offense. That's how they do it. Second and goal. Gerba flagged down. Intercepted in the end zone. Picked off by Brent Alexander. Now the flag. If it's against Baltimore, the Steelers have stopped the Ravens. The only thing Baltimore can hope for is some kind of a false start, but they're all walking towards their sideline. Holding offense number 67. This penalty is declined. 
with legal formation. Play on the end of the line was not on the line of scrimmage. Offense, this clearly is declined. The play results in an interception, touchback. Brent Alexander from Tennessee State, where he was a walk on, had four interceptions in the regular season. And right now, Brian Billick just can't believe what he's seeing. Ball just it came out of Elvis's his hand funny. He, he was expecting Shannon Sharp, I think, to be running more parallel than he was. And one mistake after the other for the Ravens. Well, two interceptions off Gerback here in the opening uh, quarter as uh, the give uh, for a couple of yards for the Steelers. And here's the interception again. And again, Elvis hit right as he throws. He's holding on to the football. He's throwing to a spot, hoping that Shannon Sharp can get to that spot. But Brent Alexander was there well in advance. And that was some takedown on Kendrell Bell. And the final seconds tick away here in the opening quarter. A very rough one for the quarterback of the Baltimore Ravens as the Pittsburgh Steelers with a field goal off the first interception and then a touchdown. To the U.S. Armed Forces who serve each and every day, we thank you so much for what you do for our country. Well, as our men and women around the world uh, representing the United States, uh, many of those having the opportunity to watch this telecast uh, know full well the incredible support back home. As you look at uh, the numbers here in the first quarter, and Gerback with two picks and Stewart throwing one, able to dodge. Uh, score by Baltimore after the interception at the seven yard line. Zero away on second and nine. Gets the handoff. Battles his way close to a first down. Dropped at the 29 by Jamie Sharper. It'll be third and one. Boy, he's got the quickness. Oh, yeah. He's got it, and he was going to be a big part of this game. Anyway, uh, they've counted on Amos, who's back from a sore shoulder. Ray Lewis here. He's got his sight set on famous Amos. Unfortunately, he is steamed by Dan Kreider, the fullback. How about that block? Kreider, <laughs> the undrafted fullback out of New Hampshire. Whoa, Ray didn't figure on that happening. Third and one. Quick throw and complete for a first down to Plexico Burris. And that's a short pass, but enough for the first down in front of Dwayne Starks. Yeah, we saw that run by Zaraway last time, and we're seeing a lot of people involved. And this guy, you know, is going to be a big part of it. He just was all over the Ravens in that last game about a month ago. Those were the two games this season. But as you can see, over an 18-yard per catch average, and it's 6'5 and a half, and nearly 230. The, the biggest receiver in the game. Four yards on that catch, enough for a first down and the third down play to the 33. He barrels his way out to the 40 yard line and a gain of seven. So, Fuamatu Mafala and Zero A yep. filling in for Bettis. Yeah, in case you missed the very beginning of the game, Jerome Bettis uh, came out for warm ups. He was expected to play. He got a shot in his groin, it didn't go well. Uh, somehow it affected a nerve and he is out of the game. So as it has been for the last five games, Chris Fuamatu Ma'afala and Amos Zaraway have to carry the load and so far they are. Steelers number one rushing team. Oh, there's the play where Stewart acts as though something wrong and then they go to the reverse to Troy Edwards with Stewart blocking and it's Edwards fumbling and covered by Pittsburgh at the 29. There is a flag down. This will come back. This will come back. There was a hold at the it's about the 45 yard line. So Stewart with the bluff walking off as if the play call was in confusing but it's a personal foul face mask against Baltimore. Now there's another flag back. Is that the only call. Well that may supersede. If they called the holding back up the field. Personal foul, grabbing the face mask, defense number 58. 15 yard penalty, automatic, first down. Who's the first well, tag yeah. uh, the run with 15 more. Look, there's, 
Oh, there's the face. Oh, they're actually calling Boulware for the face mask on the blocker. Well, that's how they ended up on the ground. That's where the flag was thrown. So my mistake, I thought they were calling the hold at that spot. They were calling the face mask on Boulware. And Hines Ward alertly yeah. downfield to cover the fumble of Edwards. First down at the 14. Again, a run by Stewart. And a couple there into the grasp of 350-pound Tony Saragusa. Boy, that was really an alert call by the official because at the point of attack like that, you see two guys locked up. They both end up on the ground. The flag comes down. You instantly... That was really observant by the official on the spot to see the face mask. 99 on It's a hold. Yeah, right here. Take a look at this. That's Plexico Burris. And right there, you see what a great job of seeing the face mask by Peter Bulwer. Second down and eight. Cordell Stewart in trouble. Still in trouble. Able to scamper <laughs> out of trouble. Are you kidding me? Oh, my. Do they love that in Pittsburgh? How demoralizing for the Ravens defense. They've got three or four guys just standing there with their hands on their hips. Most of all, Peter Boulware, who right there, instead of wrapping up Cordell Stewart, misses him once. Misses him twice and then helplessly watches him run down the field. Turns a certain loss of 10, maybe 15, 18 yards into a gain oh. of four. A tough series here, Dick, for Peter Boulware. The 15 yard face mask penalty and now a missed tackle on a blitz where he had him squared away. Cordell Stewart says, I need some breath. Time out. 32 yards total to only 10 for Baltimore. That, that seems hard to fathom. The Ravens need to stop here on third and four to force a field goal. A touchdown by the Steelers is going to make it really difficult on Baltimore. Stewart from a shotgun. And down he goes as he is stuffed by Larry Webster, the veteran from Maryland, who did not have a full sack all season long. But other than trying to run away from it, a smart play by Cordell Stewart. Do not throw it. You know that even if you take the sack, you're still in field goal position for Chris Brown. Do not get foolish with the football. That's just good work that time by Larry Webster. He's working against Alan Fanica, a pro bowler. Stayed with it. Got the swim back to the inside. 35 yards for Brown. Is it good? It hooked wide left. So that is the end that has caused uh, the problems for Chris Brown and the Steelers missed four out of five in the earlier game this season where Baltimore won. Well the wind is negligible. Look at the flags hanging there the ribbons. You can't blame anything other than just plain pulling the football. Now you know what's going through his head. Second and nine, the draw play call, and it goes to Mo Williams, and Williams gains only a couple. It'll be third and seven as we switch down to the field, and Bonnie Bernstein. Well, Dick, I had a chance to watch Chris Brown pretty closely before the game started, and he was kicking comfortably, making a bunch of field goals from the 40, 45-yard range, and I asked him what he's really done to try to improve those numbers, and he said, the thing that's really helped is during practice, coach would have me sit idle and then go and get cold, then go out and try to kick after different drills and he think that's really helped. Third down and seven. Mo Williams in the backfield. Gerbach searches for an open man to the sideline and batted away by Lee Flowers. The strong safety intended for Brandon Stokely. Didn't seem to have a lot on that pass. Oh, well no it didn't but what a good play by Flowers. This is Lee Flowers. They're sitting back in the zone and he's working the sideline and again this is a guy that used to play corner. He's strong safety now, so he's got some experience on the outside of the field. He's at home. What a big series for the Steelers defensively. Baltimore, who really needed some, some momentum to capitalize on that missed field goal, got nothing. Richardson to punt. Troy Edwards back at the Pittsburgh 30-yard line. He's hung the ball twice, but able to escape without losing it on both occasions. Finds an open crease at the 50. 
And tackled from behind at the 44 of Baltimore by the snapper Dale Hellestray. It's to Hines Ward and aboard the wide receiver on the end around with a couple of yards. Reminder to go to cbs.sportsline.com or America Online keyword CBS Sportsline. Uh, right now, Rod Woodson and the rest of this Baltimore Raven defensive unit realize that they have had a whole lot dumped on their plate early in this game here as we start making our way through the second half. They are getting nothing from their offense. There's Chris McAllister. The cornerback, you see him making the play right there on the sidelines, and it looks like he and Ray Lewis tangled legs. So McAllister over on the Ravens bench. And so on second down, the long fake from Stewart looking downfield and throwing complete. Mexico Burris, first down at the 25. What a wonderful piece of ball handling that time by Cordell Stewart. That, that was beautifully done. Mike Malarkey, the offensive coordinator for the Steelers, a good call. There's a look at the fake, and it just freezes everybody in the middle. But look how patient Cordell is rolling out. There was a time when that rollout would have been more of a sprint than it would have been a controlled movement like we saw that time by Cordell Stewart. Three catches for Burris, as you see, with 34 yards in his bank. First down inside the 25. And Saragusa, who guessed right, on the last series, didn't this time. He's offside. That certainly draws a response from the crowd. Encroachment. Number 98 defense. Five yard penalty remains first down. Well, you know, he guessed on the snap count that time, the goose. But I got to tell you one thing it's kind of like docking the Queen Mary. Once something that big gets moving, it just doesn't stop quickly. <laughs> And once Big Tony came out of his stance and started moving upfield, I'm afraid it would take a couple tugboats to get that baby stopped. Five right, penalties now for Baltimore, none for Pittsburgh. The toss to zero away. Well, he has quick feet. And a first down inside the 10 yard line. Rod Woodson from his safety spot making the tackle. Boy, what sensational blocking. As this is again, watch all the people at the point of attack. There's Wayne Gandy out front. Dan Kreider again with an outstanding block. Over pursuit then by the Ravens and the cutback by Zeroway. A formula for positive yardage. Zeroway, who had 73 yards rushing, his career best at Baltimore in the 26 21 regular season win. 37 today. Well, on the 10, first and goal. Stewart underneath. Ward at the one yard line. Boy, this this Pittsburgh passing game and what has happened to it here this football season has been something to watch. The confidence they have in one another, not a great throw by Cordell Stewart, but a 99 out of a 100 catch by Heinz Ward. Look at that. What a thing of beauty. Corey Harris. Not in position to do anything about it. He comes up and even with the big hit, Heinz Ward holds on to the football. Second and goal from the one. Zero A. No signal yet. And it appears they're going to mark it just yeah. inches outside the goal line. He reached out at the last minute with the football, but I think his knee was already on the ground by the time he actually made the stretch with the football. Credit uh, Pro Bowler Sam yeah. Adams. Let's watch the knee. That was awfully close. That was awfully close. So third and goal as the nose of that football tickling the goal line. And you have to think that they might try it twice here, Dick, with Chris Brown. Zero in. It's the Pittsburgh way. That's Bill Cowher's wife, Kay. And his three daughters, oh, they're proud of Papa. She, a former basketball star at North Carolina State. 
as zero a with a human dunk in the end zone and it's 16 to nothing. Their daughter Megan who is 6 1 a sophomore in high school is a quite a promising high school basketball player herself. Brown straight down the middle on the extra point. 17 nothing and it's a first half party here in Pittsburgh. How good a look is that a famous Amos Zeroway without the bus he takes the tacky Patsy right to the end zone. Nothing Zeroway the one yard dive for the touchdown as the Steelers continue to work with a short field down to Corey Harris this time and Harris the former Vanderbilt running back to the 29 yard line and tripped up by Lindsey Jackson. Well now the tempers start to flare a little bit. That's certainly no Hold surprise up, when a game starts to get out of control on the scoreboard. A lot of testosterone floating around down there. Let's go back and look at the touchdown one more. You know you count on your linebackers to stop going over the top. Watch both Baltimore linebackers. They're going to go low. And when Zeraway gets to the line of scrimmage he sees there's nobody up there. Both linebackers are down in the pile and even at five eight. Famous Amos shows that he's got a little vertical to his game. But no Baltimore linebacker was able to get into the air to meet him midair. Well, after five games, one touchdown allowed, two allowed here in the first half by the Baltimore defense, and Gerbach's pass goes through the hands of Ismail, the wide receiver who has uh, had a great year, led the Ravens in catches with 74 and some of his biggest plays against and if Pittsburgh. This, Dick, if this Baltimore offense right now isn't feeling some urgency they're they're lost because a three and out right here for Baltimore could spell disaster the route could be on if they don't show a little muscle and get at least a first down or two they have only 13 yards in 15 plays that's pathetic Burbach into the flat complete to Allen breaks out of a tackle fumbles the ball and Pittsburgh has it. That's Tim Lewis the Pittsburgh defensive coordinator how happy he must be Earl Holmes and Jason Gilden collaborate on the play you Gilden. Know, like it so often happens Dick Terry Allen trying to make something happen the effort is there he forces a missed tackle by Gilden and then in the second effort he ends up being stripped of the football and that's just great hustle by Terry Allen. It doesn't work out as Earl Holmes strips the football right there. And this is as anemic of an offensive effort by a football team that I have seen in the playoffs in a long time. And another short field the 34 yard line for Cordell Stewart and what has been a high powered offense for the Steelers. And Stewart looking for a big down the middle. Incomplete to Heinz Warren. He is rattled by a hit from Rod Woodson, the veteran who still can punish you. And Ward looks over, waves at him. Nice, nice well, tackle. There's some history here. Heinz Ward got a devastating hit on Rod Woodson in their game in December, and this is a payback. That is a completion all the way without that big hit from Rod Woodson because Heinz Ward would have held on to that football he was starting to put it away and that's why Rod Woodson's going to be in the Hall of Fame. That's the way you want your free safety to seal off the middle. Don't come in here and not expect to get hit. Number one pick by the Steelers back in 87 10 Pro Bowl over 60 interceptions. Stewart just does get it off in time on a screen Zoroway falling as he made the reception and that'll cost the Steelers a one yard loss on the play as Adelius Thomas was pressuring the quarterback. Tonight on 60 Minutes should a suspected terrorist be tortured to make him talk the differing views might surprise you. It's on tonight 60 Minutes. Third down 11 the Steelers at the 34. They come out four wide this time with a Stewart in the gun. Over the middle complete to Edwards short of the first down marker at the 29 yard line with Dwayne Starks 
making the defensive play and out will come Chris Brown a little less pressure on him this time with a score of 17 nothing. Yeah but still a little longer field goal. This will be what maybe 37 yards 47 yards or so. He missed 45 earlier 46. from 35. <laughs> Where are they going to spot this thing. At the 36, so it'll be 46 yards. Well, it is good. <laughs> 20 to nothing, Pittsburgh, as Terry Allen's fumble becomes another three for the Steelers. And this was. It looked initially like it's going to start to hook but then it straightens out and all oh, what this had to mean to Chris Brown. <laughs> you know doubts start to creep in. Yeah. That, oh I needed that and I needed that badly. And especially if Pittsburgh fans might be guilty already of thinking ahead to next week if this continues they'd be hosting the New England Patriots and they want that field goal kicker to get back in a groove. Well this is testing the medal of the defending world champions. Big John Ogden one of the leaders of this offensive football team. It has gone very bad for the Ravens offensively. They have a chance to maybe make something happen here before halftime or their season is spiraling down you know what. Their success is now going to be measured by getting a first down. That's that's where it's going to start. Sad but true if you're a Ravens fan. Jermaine Lewis takes it away from his teammate and uh, grab by an ankle at the 35 yard line. Hart. And a first down from that point at the 35 yard line. Tuesday on CBS. See why The Guardian is America's most watched new show. A client hiding a family secret. But how can attorney Nick Fallon expose it when he's sworn to keep silent? An all new Guardian Tuesday here on CBS. And a reminder to get complete NFL playoff and Super Bowl coverage from the official source at SuperBowl.com or America Online keyword SuperBowl.com. Terry Allen, the backfield, Gerbach fires on first down, and it's complete, close to a first down, a gain of about nine to Travis Taylor. Well, it has been a struggle to say the least for the Ravens in the first and half first half. Look at that two punts and four turnovers. <laughs> that that's 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 incredulous and not one of those possessions over 10 yards. And that, that's mind boggling. Steelers with 13 first downs none for Baltimore until now as Shannon Sharp makes uh, the catch bumped out of bounds by Joey Porter and that is the initial first down for the Ravens it comes with three minutes three seconds left in the half. Earl Holmes uh, he's uh, heading to the Pittsburgh locker room. Earl Holmes a signal caller in the middle. It has been a, a wonderful first half for Pittsburgh defensively to this point. Chad Scott there with the interception and just over Alexander in the end zone. It's been some half for Pittsburgh. From the 50 yard line, the first down throw is complete. And Sharp back to back receptions, and that one close to a first down just outside the Pittsburgh 40 yard line. The first Baltimore trip into Steeler territory as Holmes once out of sight of the crowd here at Heinz Field uh, showing that he uh, is uh, suffering some pain much more than he showed while on the field well, barely made it up the steps and he is walking very tenderly into the locker room second and about a foot Porter on the blitz they pick it up and the throw is over Sharp's head third down and less than one. Coming up on the next Dell Halftime Report, Jim, Mike, Randy, Jerry, the gang back in New York with their first half analysis, plus Troy Brown in New England. Oh, they got to have some big smiles back there in Foxborough. Join them live, all coming up on the next Dell Halftime Report. Baltimore has plenty of time to make something happen here. And a touchdown will give them some lift going to the locker room. Give to Brookings, and he can't get the first down. 
John Fiala in for the injured Earl Holmes head linebacker. The 240 pounder from the University of Washington there with the initial hit. They're going to have, we'll find out after the two minute warning, but they're going to have to go for it. 20 nothing Pittsburgh. Double coverage from Logan and Flowers, and he picks it off inside the 10. Looks like Mike Logan and Shannon Sharp have the ball together. Look, look at that, but that goes to Shannon Sharp. He's got the football. What a sensational catch by this eight-time Pro Bowler. And Shannon surprised that he got voted to the Pro Bowl this year. He said, I thought I had actually a better year last year. But how about that? When they need it on fourth down, when they need the big play on first down, go to your Hall of Famer. And the Ravens spend their first time out with a first and goal at the eight yard line. And <laughs> Shannon, who uh, is, is as loquacious as any player in the league, and we ask him, well, after football, you know, you got to start thinking, what do you want to do? He said, well, I'm better than my brother Sterling at everything else. I might as well try sports casting. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, never short of anything to say, but you know something, uh, uh, Shannon isn't where he is because he talks a good game. Shannon is there because he plays a good game. He'll uh, have a special spot in Canton Reserve for him as you look at the leaders today for the Ravens, and not much to shout about. They need a score here. First and goal from the eight, and Mo Williams, the running back, he gets the handoff, hit immediately. Charging through Kimo von Olhoffen, the veteran defensive tackle from Boise State. Now, not a lot of glory for the front three. The linebackers get the glory, but that time von Olhoffen, a good solid play. Burbach looks to the end zone. Throwing complete for the touchdown. Brandon Stokely. No, he was out of bounds. Caught the ball, but didn't get the second foot down as Stokely thought he had six. And had beaten Deshae Townsend an extra defensive back. Well, why don't we take a closer look at this, Dick? Let's go ahead and take a look at Brandon Stokely as he gets to the outside. Well, Ooh. the ruling is that the left foot touched the sideline. I think we'll look at this from multiple angles. No challenge yet. Well, there can't be a challenge. Yes, and we're inside two minutes, so it's up to the replay official. But clearly, right there, you can see his left foot was out of bounds. Inside two minutes, the decision is up in the booth. And wisely, and I think this is a smart move, stop the game, make, make sure. sure. This is a big game. From I that think, angle, tough to tell, but the other yeah, angle was pretty conclusive. That last look we had, it certainly looked conclusive to me. Here, this will tell us too. And that left foot definitely yeah. is out of bounds. An excellent piece of work by the officiating crew. And by Mike Arnold, our director, Lance Barrow, our producer, and our CBS crack crew here in uh, Pittsburgh. See, look at that. There's two sets of eyes taking a good look at it. Boy, are they in the proper position to make the call. You know, this game moves so fast, and it's played by such big, strong, active people that being in the right position is really important for the officiating crew. And there you got a good look at two guys who are right there to make the proper call. I know everyone around the country that watched that great game last night is wondering about the tuck rule, and that is the rule in the book. But uh, in the spirit of the game, they have to totally take a look at that and, and consider uh, erasing that. I mean, it's uh, it. How, how can you call a pass uh, <laughs> incomplete when the man doesn't want to throw the ball. <laughs> no, it's a that it, was a fumble. It's an anomaly in the rule the play. Book. The Baltimore receiver had one foot down on the ground dragging it, but the second foot came down out of bounds. Incomplete pass. And I think that was smart. Go ahead. Be sure. Don't don't find out after the fact that maybe we should have taken a closer look at that play. Little has gone well for that man in this first half and Billick now makes his call third and goal at the eight. Baltimore is 0 for 5 on third downs today. Underneath they go incomplete. Never had possession. Todd Heap, the rookie tight end from Arizona State. Well, it was a good throw from Elvis Gerback. It looked like he got the ball right in there where Heap should have caught it. 
but he never was able to put it away. Yeah, he took a couple of good hits. Jason Gilden is right there behind him. He takes a front side hit right there from Lee Flowers, but he never had a good handle on the football. So Matt Stover comes on. The Ravens want at least some points on the board, and this a short 26 yarder. Stover, a former national winner in the punt, pass, and kick competition in his youth out of Dallas, where he was coached by Dan Reeves, the Atlanta head coach in the YMCA. So Stover gets three for Baltimore. There's a nugget, if ever I've heard one. Coached by Dan Reeves, in really. The YMCA when Reeves was uh, involved <laughs> with the Cowboys. So 20 to 3 the score as the Ravens. Uh, in this case, Billick wanted to make certain that he didn't come away empty on that fourth and goal. Shannon Sharp with a couple of big catches on the drive, 57 yards and 11 plays. Well, it's uh, playoff action today, and next Saturday, college basketball regional action on CBS. Most of you will see the Yukon Huskies and the Arizona Wildcats. How about that comeback by Arizona against UCLA yesterday? Others, it'll be Florida and Arkansas, or the Fighting Illini and the Indiana Hoosiers. Check your local listings for the game in your area, and for more, go to cbs.sportsline.com, America Online keyword, CBS Sportsline. And a reminder, next till halftime report follows at the intermission with Jim Nance and his team. Troy Brown uh, interview and get his feelings about the Patriots' uh, remarkable win last night as they came from 13-3 down in the snow at Foxborough. He'll be on live. That's on the next till halftime report. It comes down to Troy Edwards at the 12. Full steam. And he's across the 40 to the 42-yard line. With Dwayne Starks making the tackle and 44 seconds left in the half. Steelers led by Stewart, eight for 11. Not a lot of yardage there and one interception, but they've run the ball well again today, led by Zeroway with his 38 yards and two touchdowns. They worked with a short field. Uh, there are three scoring drives from the Baltimore 43. Then they had a 51 yard drive for a touchdown after a short punt. And then after the fumble, a 43 yard uh, drive for seven. Well, Pittsburgh knows that they're going to begin the second half with a possession of the football. It'd be very interesting to see if they get very aggressive. Zero away and zero away across the 45 to the 46, about five on the play. And that's that's really no surprise. I, I think Pittsburgh is content to go into the to the half down, uh, leading 20 to three, knowing that they'll start the second half with the football. Yes, it's outstanding field position, but I think uh, I, I think the way Bill Cower plays football, relying on his defensive football team, he's not going to take a chance. Stewart now does call time as the clock ran down to 14 seconds. And maybe Cowers thought as well, we could wind up and throw a long one and hope maybe and something good. And see would if happen. you get a penalty. Maybe see if you can get some sort of a penalty. Although uh, a lot of the Steelers were already went inside. <laughs> There's Dwayne Washington on his way into the locker room. He's in for a bit of a surprise. If there's a turnover <laughs> here, they're going to have to send out an emergency call for some of the defense. I hope the televisions are on in the uh, locker room, guys. Uh, don't get undressed yet. There. <laughs> they got the word. Get back yeah. out there. There's Lee Flowers walking up in front of Dwayne. So uh, they that was uh, quite a curveball they were throwing there by uh, by their head coach and Cordell taking that time. And of course, uh, Cordell Stewart with this. Uh, Long Hill Mary type conditions uh, goes back to his great throw for Colorado that beat the University of Michigan. And now he's just been taking me. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot, yeah. Cordell. Yeah. <laughs> so with that, kneel down. The Pittsburgh Steelers do head to the locker room with a very impressive first half. The score of Pittsburgh 20, the Ravens 3. We go down to Bonnie Bernstein. Well, Dick, the Ravens may have. And uh, he sends the second half kickoff down to Lindsey Jackson. And Jackson, a rare return to the 30. Fumble the ball, and out of bounds it goes in Pittsburgh's possession. A 
Another fumble that stays in the Pittsburgh's hands. Bonnie? Some quick injury updates on the Ravens side. Tight end Todd Heap sprained his ankle at the end of the first half. He's questionable. Dan, you mentioned Earl Holmes. He sprained his knee. He is out for the game. Nonetheless, Bill Cowher extremely happy with his defense and the havoc he's, they've created. And he also touched on running back Amos Zaraway. Now, he told us before the game he expected Zaraway would get more play because he's a quicker back than Bettis, could get outside, quick burst to the hole. He said, I knew we'd use him a lot. I didn't realize just how much we use them. And Zeroway's in there now, Bonnie, with uh, the blocker John Whitman in front, and he gets the handoff. Slips outside, and crosses the 35 to the 36 with Ray Lewis and Jamie Sharper on his heels. And that's a good look at Zeroway just getting around the corner, even though Ray Lewis Dick ended up making the tackle. Zeroway got positive yardage, and he's the only stealer back that could have gotten an edge like that against Ray Lewis and picked up a good four to five yards. I was going to ask uh, Bonnie and maybe she can find out for us uh, with Jerome Bettis unable to play because of uh, that uh, injection that caught a nerve just prior to the kickoff whether or not he's watching back in the uh, clubhouse or whether he's uh, made any appearance on the sidelines. Second down and five it has to be a very disappointing day for him. This looked to be a planned run and Stewart fumbles the ball and again down. the Steelers <laughs> Able to fall on it, but the uh, flag goes down after the play, and uh, signal goes against the Steelers. I think they rolled uh, Cordell down on the ground prior to the ball coming loose. Jamie Sharper making the defensive play. Would have brought up a third down situation. Yep, and maybe they are going to decline based on Crenty's actions. I think they've got to see exactly what the yardage would be. Going back to where Cordell Stewart was down, it would be third and whatever that number is, somewhere in that four to five yard area. Brian Billick, what's more important here, the down or the or the yardage? It'll be second down and, of course, uh, a lot farther to go. Everybody here seems to be a little. <laughs> well, the officials started to walk off the penalty, and I'm not sure Holding they. Holding offense number 72, 10 yard penalty. Repeats down. So the Ravens have accepted the penalty, the holding on uh, Wayne Gandy, and they'll, they'll back up the Steelers. Gandy, in his eighth year, has uh, been in the league the longest, along with Kimo von Olhofen, without making it to uh, a Super Bowl on this uh, Pittsburgh roster. Good Fires complete to Plexico Burris. First down yardage out to the 43. Well, that backfired. They gave the Steelers uh, the extra down in the yardage, and they gobbled that up in a hurry. So rather than third and about five, they went for second and long, and Cordell responds with a perfect strike to Plexico Burris. And working against a very soft Raven zone. Boy, he sold the outside move yep. well, didn't he? He's a bigger target than 6'5. He says he's closer to 6'6, tallest uh, wide receiver in the league. First down at the 44, the Steelers. Cordell, quick throw and complete across the 50 at the 48. As Heinz Ward, who set a Pittsburgh record this year with 94 catches, the old Mark uh, Yancey Thigpen, 85. It's just the way that Cordell Stewart throws the ball with confidence, and why not when this is what you're throwing to? Heinz Ward with 94 on the regular season, Burris with 66, and really the three of them, including including Cordell Stewart got off to a very slow start and it, it sure didn't look like they were going to finish the season the way they started. Well, the chemistry of this team as uh, Cowher would attest and the Pittsburgh fans has been remarkable about the last two and a half months. Zero way tackled by Burnett after a gain of a couple it's a first down. Bunny. Well, Dick, we checked in on Jerome Bettis. He's still in the building. He's still in the training room. No, he hasn't made an appearance out here on the field, but a little mouse told me he is firmly planted in the training room in front of the TV and is very happy with the job the guys filling in for him are doing. 
Well, he's such a delightful uh, man and uh, not only uh, one of the great runners the number 12 rusher all time in NFL history and wanted uh, he was salivating at the thought of being able to play today but a great team guy as well and he'll be the first to congratulate the runners who have taken his place today he's certain of that and on zero away picking and choosing and getting a couple to the 44 yard line on first down. Well it has been a productive day so far for the aforementioned Amos Darraway. See, he is the, the he's the X factor. He brings such a different look. He's got more speed than any of the Steelers running back more cutback ability. That was an outstanding touchdown run where he made a quick cut and of course his second one where he goes over the top. Famous Amos is demonstrating that he's got a lot of little running tricks in his bag. He has uh, shown a wide variety of moves so far and we've still got an entire half to go. Two touchdowns today. He had two total in the season. One rushing and one catching. Cordell on the scramble chased by Adams and Sarah goes in. So it might be wise to head out of bounds over here and be caught by Larry Webster. Well, Tony gets Saragusa is faster than you would think for a man of his size, but chasing Cordell Stewart has to be a bit of a frustrating experience. That's, we'll see Tony come into the picture here from the left. There he goes. Now, you know, he's moving better than you might think. That's uh, for guys, uh, you know, Tony's announced his retirement. He's got some bad wheels, and uh, look at that. He's in such good shape, he didn't even need any water. Played Check it. those out. <laughs> Played his college ball here at the University of Pittsburgh has a lot of family and friends here cheering him. Blitz. Stewart throws incomplete. He did have a man there, Dan Kreider, and it was Corey Harris coming on a safety blitz to pressure Cordell Stewart. Well, Cordell Stewart, again, when the pressure's up the middle and totally unblocked is Corey Harris. Cordell though without moving very far just that pocket movement he just moved to subtly just a couple of yards enough shiftiness to make Harris miss and he's able to get rid of the football I, you really think that a couple of years ago that that's the type of thing that Cordell Stewart would have just taken off and tried to make something crazy happen Jermaine Lewis ever dangerous at the tennis Josh Miller about to deliver his first punt of the game and they let the play clock uh, run out and a delay of game uh, is signaled. But if there's one guy on this field Dick you and I both know can get the Ravens back into this ball game it's number 84. Time and time delay again. Game. Offense five yards repeat fourth down. Jermaine Lewis has made a big punt return to get the Ravens back on track when they've been in the doldrums. Six punt return touchdowns in his uh, six years in the league out of Maryland. Miller. High wobbler that Lewis takes it to 17 and wrapped up immediately as downfield with Troy Edwards to make the play. He not only returns kicks for the Steelers, he's the first man down against the opposing returner. Time out in Pittsburgh. And then will the Ravens defense uh, be sharper this second half. They stop Pittsburgh on their first possession. And now it's Baltimore from its 18. Gerbach into the flat. And it's Terry Allen. Boy, he meets resistance from rookie Kendrell Bell in a hurry. This second round pick out of Georgia. Well, that kind of speed shows you why he was the AP rookie of the year. He only got 41 of the 50 possible votes. And you know what? The Steelers had two other. Defensive rookie of the year. Jack Lambert and Joe Green. Did they do any good? <laughs> Pretty lofty company for Kendrell Bell. Of course, he's the first linebacker to start as a rookie since Lambert back in 74. Trying to get outside is Terry Allen. Gets to the corner and then is ridden down, off the field to play. Allen the ball carrier. It'll be well shy of a Stop first down. 20, Dwayne Washington. An awfully good stiff arm at the end of this run by Terry Allen who only at 208 pounds has power that really belies his size. Boy, that, that's a pretty good one right into the throat. That's, you can see the Dwayne Washington he's got the angle he's right there to make the play. But that stiff arm buys Terry Allen another couple of yards. Wiley Allen over 100 yards rushing against Minnesota and Miami the last two games on a couple of bionic knees. Oops. 
Shannon Sharp appeared to jump the gun. Elvis Gerback, I think, was changing the play. That was a really prolonged snap count. False start. Offense number 82. Five yard penalty remains third down. Now the Ravens uh, pinched themselves several times on penalties at crucial times in the first half. Billick needs uh, the play to be more perfect. This crowd hasn't gotten back into the game yet here in the second half. This is their first chance to shine. Third and nine. Go back to the sidelines. To Taylor, was he inbounds? No. Chad Scott covering for Pittsburgh. Well, that was a heck of an effort by Travis Taylor, trying to get both feet down on a ball that was thrown a little wide. He makes the break on Chad Scott. He does a great job of dragging the right foot. The official on the sideline must have ruled that the left foot was out of bounds initially. So the Ravens are now 0 for 7 third down conversions today. Troy Edwards back for Richardson's punt. That one off the side of his foot. Covered by the up back and that's Bobby Shaw. Oh, what a risky Shaw. catch. <laughs> Has it at the 43 of Baltimore. That was a good but uh, a dangerous play. Time out with 8.53 left in the third. The Baltimore 43, another short field for the home team. And the load being placed on this Baltimore defense gets ever more heavy here, Dick, as, a, as time after time they've got to defend a very short field. And of course they're down by 17 and part of the Pittsburgh style as you saw that last graphic possession time two to one over Baltimore today. Costa zero away and right there is Kelly Gregg the third year defensive tackle from Oklahoma. Played, played in uh, NFL Europe uh, kind of grooved his game and made this uh, Ravens roster. And one of the few plays for substantial negative yardage against the Steelers offense today. Not very often you get a tackle on a running play that's not a reverse or something of that nature that, that really ends up in that many negative yards. And he guessed right there and made the big play. Second and 16 with Heinz Ward in motion. Stewart, the pump of the run. Flags down, so is Stewart. I think they're going to get a holding call on the Steelers that time. I think uh, Delius Thomas was uh, in a position to make a play and he got tackled. So this uh, the worst series of the game for the Steelers moving backwards a loss on first down on the tackle by Greg and now the hold as you look at uh, Edwin Mulatana. <laughs> holding offense number 84. 10 yard penalty repeat second down right, Jeremy Tooman the tight end this is him working right here to pretty much of a pretty much of a takedown right in plain view and boy you see the flag coming in at his feet so you're right of a couple of uh, pretty ugly runs by the Steelers they keep this up and uh, <laughs> they may be facing uh, one of the longer third downs we've seen in a while Surprisingly, That's Peter Bowler, their top pass rusher, taken out of the game here in a pass situation. Stewart bluffing the quarterback draw and throwing long incomplete. Boy, that's one of those deals where it almost looked like Cordell made up his mind he was going to throw that ball regardless of what the coverage. Because that was uh, that was an unwise throw. You've got a 17-point lead. Uh, that's not the time to take a chance. Rod Woodson and Chris McAllister are the two Ravens back there and they are that they're just too close to take a chance like that. Intended for yeah. Heinz Ward but Jeremy Tooman was only about five yards away the tight end. That's a nifty little play though. Cordell faked like he was running then backed up. That's a, a double clutcher for sure. A little wrinkle. So third and 26. There's the blitz up the middle. And Stewart gets it off and no flag thrown as yet so. He was uh, considered to be outside the pocket. Sharper coming in on him. Well, that was uh, again the best pressure is always the pressure up the middle. 
Anthony Mitchell was coming in Jamie Sharper and that was by far the worst offensive series for the uh, Steelers today other than one where there was a turnover that was three ugly plays. Now Josh Miller to punt it. Jermaine Lewis drifting back inside his 15. Now picks up some blocks. Look out. 40. One man to beat the putter and he will not be able to catch Jermaine Lewis. There it is as advertised. Lewis 88 yards for the touchdown. He had a 62 yarder against the Steelers the last time they played and you wonder why do you kick to Jermaine Lewis. The most dangerous punt return man in the NFL. If I'm kicking the ball those sidelines have to look awfully inviting and that was just beautiful blocking by his punt return team. There wasn't a Steeler that came within two yards of getting a hand on Jermaine Lewis. And all of a sudden, guess what? The Ravens are back in this game. And as Bill Cowher warned, we've got to be able to corral Jermaine Lewis as the extra point connects for Matt Stover. Lewis with six punt return touchdowns regular season gets one today. Was the special teams player ever dangerous? Six in the regular season. Remember, he had a kickoff return for a touchdown and the last Super Bowl as well. 20 to 10. Plenty of time. We're at the midpoint of the third period. And Kite line drives it down to Troy Edwards. Edwards holding that ball way out to his side. And Alvin Porter and company take him down at the 30 yard line. Edwards on the return. And we have a timeout with 7.04 left in the third. Baltimore draws within 10. Up, Jamie Sharper and then the assist to Ray Lewis. Here's a footnote on the punt return touchdown by Jermaine Lewis. 88 yards is the longest punt return in NFL postseason history. So a little history made by Lewis here in Pittsburgh today. Well, Baltimore has been dealing with this and right now I'm sure they're thinking that it's at about time that Pittsburgh shows how they can handle of some tough times. Bad offensive series before punt return for a touchdown and now still not much going on offensively. Regain their focus. That's what Pittsburgh has to do. Shotgun on third and eight. Steps away from the blitz. Whoa, how did he get out of those two tackle throws? Incomplete. Hines Ward with a diving attempt at the 45. Corey Harris covering. And Sam Adams, Ray Lewis put pressure on Stewart. And this is about as quiet as you have heard this crowd at Heinz Field all day long because they smell trouble. They're sensing that things are not well in Steeler land right now. Yeah, you got a 10 point lead, but you know these are the defending world champions you're dealing with. And Miller with Jermaine Lewis aims it toward the yeah. sidelines. One, one punt too late. The Ravens will come up with good field position close to the 40 yard line the 39 but they kept it away from uh, Jermaine Lewis and there's a flag down uh, at the 38 back on Pittsburgh's half of the field. Holding against the Ravens. During the kick, holding, receiving team number 88. By rule, this penalty would be enforced at the spot where the ball went out of bounds, 10 yards, first down. Tight end John Jones. Uh, so the Ravens will start with the 29 yard line with 531 left in the third, trailing by 10. Twenty to ten Pittsburgh with five and a half minutes left in the third quarter. Gerback almost intercepted as Joey Porter reaching into the flat had his hands on it. Well, Elvis just breathed a very deep sigh of relief. That would have been a backbreaker. He doesn't see Porter underneath as he's just trying to get it outside to Ismail. He sees that Ismail certainly being given a good cushion by Dwayne Washington on the corner. Never saw Porter. Terry Allen, the tailback. 
fake to him. Fire by Gerbach. Incomplete. Went right through the hands. That's a rare drop by uh, Travis Taylor, who has been blue fingered here this season and uh, catching 42. Well, Travis Taylor and Elvis Gerbach hooked up last week in that play in Miami down the sideline for one of the bigger plays of the game, but that's the kind of a that's the kind of a drop you can't afford when you're trying to come back into a football game. Oh, he hit him between the eight and the nine, didn't he? 0 for 7 today, Baltimore on third down. Here's third and ten. Underneath, incomplete, no flag. Cadre Ismael covered by Dwayne Washington. Oh well, for eight on third down. Yep, and the crowd is back into the game. That's just you're allowed to put that left hand on the receiver, which is what Dwayne Washington did. He came around with the right hand and got it on the football. That's a good sound defensive play by a veteran corner. Kyle Richardson to kick it. Troy Edwards back at the 30. Bobby Shaw the up. Return man, a beautiful spiral delivered by Richardson back to the 24. Edwards with flags down. Crossing the 30 yard line. Gary Baxter down the bottom of the pile for the Ravens. And this one apparently to go against the Steelers. Uh, Corey Harris was the Raven down there trying to uh, make a play on the punt return, and I think he got blocked from behind or held or one or the other. Looks like held. Now Bill Cower looking puzzled and well he should as his During team. During the return of the kick, holding, receiving team number 26, 10 yard penalty, first down. His team so hot wired in that opening half, but flat here in the third. Well, certainly offensively, that was a, an outstanding defensive series. Now we've got to get uh, a little something out of his offenses. That's what Bill Cower telling his team right now guys the defense stepped up you've got to step up now from the 17 Cordell Stewart crosses the zero way behind some blockers but good pursuit by those linebackers Jamie Sharper and Peter Bowler along with Dwayne Starks well what's the most important factor a team making the Super Bowl here are some options dominant defense high scoring offense win the uh, turnover battle how about home field playoff experience the head coach or others why don't you uh, log on cast your vote at NFL.com. I think uh, hot dog uh, you know the, you know you rate the hot dogs around the league and sometimes that can be factored in. You never know. <laughs> that's a whole other issue. Oh we had hot dogs in every state. <laughs> we, that's why I brought it up. <laughs> Just finished one. Stewart trying to throw in the flat low to zero way incomplete and Things just not wow. clicking now, and part of that is this Baltimore defense uh, has stepped it up, putting pressure on Stewart. Well, you could just see that this Steeler offense was oozing confidence in the first half. Everything they did was working out. They, they were in and out of the huddle. They were crisp. Now you can just see that things are a little more lethargic. They're not moving. They're not running off the field. They're not running on the field. Uh, their pace to the line of scrimmage has it, it's just a little more leisurely. Stewart only two for seven here in the third quarter after an eight for 11 first half. We're down six. Fulmatu, Mafala, and he has the first down. The man from Honolulu played his college ball at Utah, filling in for Bettis and running like the bus. Well, he's got he got some great blocking that time. Going to get a good lead block by Wayne Gandy, his left tackle, who pulls out and gets the kick out. He gets good work from Bobby Shaw, his wide receiver. And now the Steelers, hey, now this is smart. They're going to do a little hurry up and try to pick up the tempo. With Bobby Shaw, the slot man. And the uh, Ravens got a man late on the field to Daly as Thomas, number 96. You saw him running in from the sidelines. Saragusa making the tackle on zero way with an assist to Bullwear. And, and this is an attempt by the Steelers to keep this Raven personnel on the field. They want Saragusa to stay on the field. They want the big guys in there to have to defend every down, Let's not go. just first down. The Ravens have to call yeah. a timeout. Yeah. They're confused. Yeah. 
kudos to Bill Cower for calling that, and kudos to Marvin Lewis right there for saying, hey, let's stop this right now. Come on, we'll talk this through. We've been here before. Come on over, and we'll get squared away. Smart call by the Lewis. Now, how do you figure this? That's well, we have a moment, Dan Marvin Lewis. Last year at this time, as they went to the Super Bowl, everyone said, and he's got head coach written all over him, Marvin mm -hmm. Lewis. He's a defensive genius. The players like him. They, he inspires people. Now, here with all the openings, have we heard Marvin Lewis's name connected with any of those vacancies? No, because if someone wanted to talk to Marvin, even though you can't do it until the Ravens playoff run is over, you can still, ahead of time, go ahead and request permission to talk to him to find out if you know permission would be granted and no one has even contacted the Ravens as of yesterday to talk to Marvin Lewis and I'm with you Dick it's, it's a pretty amazing thing what Brian Billick said yeah. yesterday if anyone doesn't isn't interested in this man as a head coach I want to play you next year because yeah. you've, you got don't faulty, you've got faulty management <laughs> you're right and well, maybe that'll it, happen later. Everyone's in a rush to hire a coach, and of course, last year Marvin Lewis was penalized because they went all the way to the Super Bowl and won it, and all the jobs were filled. Stewart on second and seven, a little shovel pass this time to zero away, weaving his way to the 45 and a first down. Rod Woodson finally gets him to the turf, and what a! Finally, a sign of life here by the Pittsburgh offense as they pick up a pair of first downs. Amos Zeraway bothered all year by a, a shoulder injury, you know, really just now back healthy. And that is <laughs> dart throw. Well, that's, you know, it did look like a dart throw. Well done, you're right. And he uh, put it right in that 100 point circle right <laughs> in the middle. <laughs> just quivering in there. <laughs> first down at the 45. Zeroway gets a breather. 2:31 left in the third. Stewart batted down incomplete as Larry Webster got his nits on it. Friday on uh, CBS, see why first Monday is television's newest hit drama. James Garner, Joe Matania, starring first Monday. It's Friday at 9, 8 Central here on CBS. The Steelers always go into a game with a couple trick plays. At their disposal. Uh, unfortunately, I think they involved Jerome Bettis being the guy who was going to throw a pass. We've seen him do that before this year for a touchdown against Tampa. And Bettis, uh, him not playing, you wonder if that's curtailed that or eliminated. Well, they crowd the line of scrimmage, and then it's Stewart. Perhaps on an ad lib or maybe a draw. Gains about eight. Finally wrapped up from behind by Ray Lewis. And he had to really. Uh, Go to some effort to not run over Carl Paganelli, the umpire. Uh, he really got in uh, Cordell's way and forced him to make a cut, I think, when he might have gone the other direction. Why? Uh, the umpire is always in harm's way. He's trying to get out of the way. And Cordell had to go to the right when I kind of got the feeling he maybe wanted to go to the left, but the umpire was right there in his face. Brings up third down and two. Stewart with 29 yards rushing today. Again on the quarterback draw, and he's diving for the first down. Slash. He says, "I still like that nickname given to him by Cower back in his rookie year when he played so many different positions." Well, we saw yesterday what Donovan McNabb did to the Chicago Bears when you have a quarterback that's capable of that extra dimension. Marvin Lewis knows it. Going into this game, the Cordell Stewart, he's come so far in his ability to throw the football. This has always been there. This running ability has never gone anywhere and oh so dangerous and oh so effective. Now Cordell Stewart with 32 yards rushing today, 19 total for Baltimore. Zero way around the corner. Ray Lewis runs him out. Substantial gain on first down. Tonight on the CBS Sunday movie terrorism meets its worst enemy and it's Chuck Norris the president's man Robert Urich uh, co-stars in the world premiere movie president's man that's tonight on CBS. Ball spotted at the 37 where it's second down and three. Well that yellow line really showed last night in Foxborough didn't it. <laughs> they needed it. 
The toss again, almost the same play. Go away, hit by Lewis, just shy of the first down at the 35 yard line. Well, Ray Lewis, you heard him at the very top of uh, our day when he said he feels that the winner of this game goes to the Super Bowl. And indeed, the AFC uh, Central Division represented in the last two Super Bowls two years ago, Tennessee, and last year, of course, by the Ravens. And that's the end of the third quarter here in Pittsburgh with the Steelers lead cut to 20 to 10. We'll return to Heinz Field right after this message and a word from your local station. 2002 NFL Gatorade punt pass and kick program. Debbie Plor representing Gatorade and Gene Washington from the National Football League will congratulate the eight national champions. The eight nine year old winners from Philadelphia Pennsylvania Marissa Rudy. And from Yuma Arizona Mark Leal. In the 10 11 age group from West Sacramento California Ariel Gregerson. And from Crystal Lake Illinois Josh Lambeau. The 12 13 year old winners from Michigan City Indiana Ashley Edinger. And from Pleasanton California Troy Smith. And finally the 14 15 year old winners from Fairfield Ohio Nikki Reed. And from Athens Pennsylvania Brandon G. The National Football League and Gatorade would like to thank all the contestants and volunteers who made the punt pass and kick a successful program again in 2001. Let's give our eight national champions another round of applause. Oh my. Well congratulations to those uh, young men and women a little irony out there Dick the fellow in the middle wearing the Bears jersey his name is Lambo. <laughs> How but about spelled L-A-M-B-O. <laughs> All right, that's uh, close enough. I don't care how it's spelled. Lambo is Lambo. A little ironic I there. I wonder huh? if they called him Curly. Uh, that's a great thrill for these young people. And as we said, Matt Stover, one of uh, several out of the punt pass and kick uh, program that have gone on to play in the National Football League. Meanwhile, third down and short. Ford as he is hit hard by Rod Woodson and Woodson at 36 years of age still throwing his body around. But you know what Dick we're seeing an awful lot of missed tackles by the Baltimore Ravens defensively and I think it's really starting to show up that that the Steelers have had the ball for 32 and a half minutes the Ravens for only 12 and a half minutes the Ravens offensively only three first downs in this ball game. And you know something we're starting to see a, a, a lot of fatigue I think starting to show up on this Baltimore defense and justifiably so. There's your possession time and first downs rack up and that means possession time. It's off wide open Burris. Plexico Burris touchdown Steelers. Touchdown to that big tall target who is so tough to tackle and I think we saw some fatigue on the legs of Rod Woodson as he was unable to make the tackle on Plexico Burris. Brian Billick's offense has really hung their defensive unit out to dry. Extra point try by Chris Brown and the Steelers up their lead to 27 to 10 a flag down on the extra point as you look at Cordell to Plexico there's an unusual first name combination not too many of those around and this one uh, a 32 yard score. Twelve players participating on the defense they have accepted the option to put the penalty on the kickoff five yards will be assessed against Baltimore. The extra point is good. Well that was an awakening drive Dan for the Steelers they go 83 yards in 12 plays. 
27 to 10. Jermaine Lewis, no, it's taken away by Corey Harris. That uh, Steelers will applaud that move, and Harris stripped up at the 27 yard line and appears to have almost lost his trousers in the process. Trousers. <laughs> One more look at this last uh, Pittsburgh touchdown the strike uh, from Stewart directly to Plexico Burris Chris McAllister playing his own releases him to the inside No, the deep middle belongs to Rod Woodson and right in the seam and then it's all Plexico Burris Woodson not able to close and make the tackle and the big man opens up what looks like an insurmountable lead for Pittsburgh. Screen to Mo Williams on first down, and he's able to manage only two, maybe three yards. Now you say 17 points insurmountable. Of course it's not, but the way the Pittsburgh defense has been manhandling this Baltimore offense today, we're going to have to see something really out of character offensively here for Baltimore. Jermaine's punt return is Jermaine, it? Well, his punt return was actually for more yards. Than the Ravens have in their entire offensive output today. Exactly right. With that three yards in the last play, 84 yards total offense for Baltimore, 88 for Lewis on one punt return. A juggling catch by Mo Lewis, and he's tackled at the 35. Make that Mo Williams, and uh, he's tackled as he crossed the 35 yard line. Monday on CBS. Tomorrow night, don't miss a night of great television. It starts with King of Queens, followed by Yes, Dear. Monday's number one comedy then is uh, Everybody Loves Raymond, then Ted Dawson stars as Becker, followed by an all-new 48 Hours tomorrow night on CBS. Ray Lewis in deep thought as time runs out on the Super Bowl champion Ravens. 12.45 left, third down, Gerbach. Golden can't get him. And the throw almost intercepted as the charge through from Dwayne Washington and Chad Scott and Scott who opened the game with an interception almost got another. We're going to get roughing the passer against the Steelers and this is going to keep Baltimore's drive alive. Aaron Smith was in on the passer. Personal foul roughing the passer defense number 91 throw forearm into the quarterback 15 yards automatic first down. There's the face of unhappiness. Jason Gilden, the first one in flushes Gerbach. Oh, forearm to the head. That was a forearm to the chest, but it was a forearm, and it was unnecessary. Aaron Smith saw the ball was gone. Silly, silly mistake. So first down, Baltimore at the Steeler 49, and a flag down. Here to be a kip. Vickers rocking back. False start. Offense number 77. Five yard penalty remains first down. Well, as Brian Billick would shout to his team, that's only five yards, but it just, it, it just, it's pricking the balloon. Well, you know, it's, it's just. It's like last drive. They're doing okay, but Travis Taylor drops a perfectly thrown back. They're in a position they can't afford these mistakes. Everyone's magnified. Gerback hit as he throws incomplete. Looking for Cadre Ismail, and boy, the Steelers done a good job covering Ismail today. Well, this has faced a lot of pressure from this Pittsburgh defense. Of course, so has everybody they've played this year. Tries to step up Joey Porter at the last minute. Not much of a hit. But Elvis has not had a lot of good looks in the pocket for the Ravens. This Pittsburgh defense today has been magnificent. Number one in the league and uh, underlining that talent all day against Baltimore, allowing just 90 yards. Second and ten. Gilden gets Gerbach with Smith following up. The man who led the Steelers in sacks this year and has led them the last uh, four years, 12 this season, Jason Gilden. He's going to the Pro Bowl. For the second year in a row, number 92 is going to the Pro Bowl. Justifiably so. 12 sacks this year, 13 and a half last year. 
And Terry Allen is no match in trying to keep Jason Gilden away from Elvis Gerback. Now third down and 25. Here they come. And Gerbach with a long throw for Taylor incomplete. Out of bounds. He was well covered. Now the same play, that, the same combination that they hit last week against Miami. And again, silly mistakes and then big plays by the Steelers. Send the Raven offense to the sideline. Fans cheering that third down defense. They've thrown a shutout against Baltimore. 0 for 9, the Ravens on third down today. And John Fiala at middle linebacker taking over for Earl Holmes doing a good job this half. Holmes the uh, Steelers leading tackle. Richardson's punt. Chases Edwards back to his 12. Beautiful running. To the 40 and out of bounds across the 45 yard line Troy Edwards Richardson the punter able to Ease him off the field of play. 52 yard punt, 33 on the return. Timeout in Pittsburgh. Ring, it's been a generation ago. Is this the Steeler team that could do it? With the lead, they start at the 47 and zero away the ball carrier. Breaking tackles again and into Baltimore territory after a five yard gain. Saturday. We invite you to join host Greg Gumbel and Phil Sims at Phil's hometown of Oklahoma, Kentucky. Third annual Phil Sims All Iron Team. I wonder if we made it, man. In addition <laughs> to, to the 15 players honored for their dedication, toughness, and likability, one head coach, one assistant coach will also be named to the squad. For more, go to cbs.sportsline.com, America Online keyword. CBS Sports lineup. I'm just going to guess now, but I bet Bruce Matthews makes that team. I'm just guessing. You think? I think Bruce Matthews on the team. He's got a good chance. Second down and four. And Foo. They cry, but only a one yard gain for Fuamatu Maafala. Chris. <laughs> I'm going with Foo from now on. How, what if they traded I am Badejo over to the Steelers or the other way around? You could have them both in the same backfield. Chris Fuamato Maafala and Oba Femi Ian Badejo. You'd need a long drive just to get both names in. This game used to be simpler. <laughs> Third and four. Delay and then the handoff to Poole, who a Greg there to make the tackle shy of the first down. That was not a scintillating, uh, <laughs> a scintillating looking play there, huh? That didn't look like a clean handoff out of the show. Oh, Cordell bobbled the ball, and that uh, he just didn't get a clean handle on, but he did a good job of staying with it and getting it into Fuamatu. That just trips off your tongue, partner. I like the way you say it. Yeah, but I couldn't say scintillating. <laughs> well, you get, nobody's perfect. I messed that up. Lewis, may feel is about as perfect as the punt returner can be, stands alone at the 10. And the left footed punter Josh Miller sends it toward him and kicked it a little too well into the end zone for the touchback. 9 18 showing on the clock fourth quarter at Hinesfield Pittsburgh where the Steelers in this playoff lead by 17. The tight end uh, Tony Gonzalez and Sharp with 73 catches this year to share the lead amongst tight ends. Ravens at their 20. Nine minutes left they're down by 17. Gerbach. In the flat to Taylor. And he's tackled at the 27, a pickup of plus seven. And there's Bonnie Bernstein. Well, Dick, many consider the Ravens' defense the most cocky unit in the league, but the Steelers do okay in their own right, particularly safety Lee Flowers. Take note of this and put it in your back pocket. With six and a half minutes left in the first quarter, the first quarter, Flowers turned around to his fellow defensive backs and said, Elvis Gerback is done. It has nothing to do with him. It's all us, and they've certainly backed it up. Yeah, Flowers is the spokesman, and that pass a little low for Cadre Ismail. He has yet to catch a pass today. And Cadre has been all pro 
playing against the Steelers over the last several years. He has been the one Baltimore receiver that has really lit up the Steelers secondary. And you see four attempts as Gerbeck tries to get it to him without a completion. Looks like Edwin Mulatalo is down the left guard. He's had trouble the with a hamstring this week. Yeah, he injured it on Wednesday, his right hamstring. That's uh, about 350 or 60 pounds of left guard. Here's Edwin right over here. Yeah, uh, looks like he's gra is he grabbing a right his right hand or his shoulder or elbow. Something uh, looks to be something with his right arm. Meanwhile, the uh, Ravens need three for a first down. Yet to convert on third down, and they don't this time. Juggling try by Ismael, couldn't pull it in as Dwayne Washington there for Pittsburgh. You see the flag sign up on our scoreboard, and uh, that's at the line of scrimmage against Baltimore. Well, that's a face mask. One of the offensive linemen obviously got a hand up there. Personal foul, grabbing the face mask. Offense number 74. The penalty is declined. Fourth down. Orlando Bobo is in for Mulatalo. Well, we've just seen a loss of focus and concentration by the Ravens here in the second half. Drop passes that time by Ismail. Travis Taylor had one before. Uh, they, they've got the look of a team right now that uh, really struggling to try to get into this game. Back. Richardson's punt aimed toward Troy Edwards, very short. Takes a backward bounce, hits a Raven, and then hits a Steeler, and covered by Brad Jackson. Well, once the ball is touched by one of the Ravens, the it's kick dead. was illegally touched by the kicking team at the 50-yard line. The ball will be placed there. Pittsburgh's ball, first down. See, the Steeler has nothing to lose by trying to make a play on the ball after it's illegally touched. And with uh, that timeout, 827 showing fourth quarter. Super Bowl champions. And it will be uh, the last game for that man, Tony Siragusa. Unless the Ravens come up with a miracle finish with eight and a half to go. First down at midfield. Play action Stewart. Jamie Sharper gets a hand on him, but Stewart again showing how strong legged he is, able to free himself enough so that he didn't take the loss. Well, in that last punt uh, that gave Pittsburgh their possession here, normally a sprinter is double teamed, but this is an outstanding job by Deshae Townsend here working against Alvin Porter. How well does he block him? How about he takes him all the way over to the bench? Not only gets him into the sideline, but keeps him there. <laughs> That's one where uh, all the guys, when they get together in a special team meeting this week, will have a pretty good yuck. They'll give uh, they'll give Deshay a few high fives for that effort. That wasn't a block. That was a frisk. <laughs> Here's Zeroway bouncing back to the line of scrimmage at the 50, where it'll be third and 10. Beginning Thursday, season premiere of the PGA Tour on CBS, the Phoenix Open, presented by Xerox. Defending champion Mark Kalkovecchia expected, along with Tom Lehman, Jesper Parnovic, Phil Mickelson, Paul Eisinger, and many more. For more, go to cbs.sportsline.com, America Online keyword CBS Sportsline, and our producer today, Lance Barrow, of course, the producer of all of the great coverage of golf on CBS. We wish him a happy tour, and we'll catch up with him down in Augusta at the Masters. I love watching golf on television. I mean, I love the game of golf, and I love watching it on TV. Well, really you're going to get a chance to see a lot in the next few weeks. Uh -oh. Belair as it's stripped away from a zero way, and Ray Lewis was the man on the spot for Baltimore. A lot of digging underneath the pile, and the Steelers somehow, as it has been throughout this day, the loose balls have fallen to the black jerseys. Lewis not at all happy about it. He's still going at it with somebody. I think Alan Fanica is down there somewhere. Now, fellas. Get off, get off, get off. Get off. Get off. Get off. Get off. 
First, the pride of these uh, Super Bowl Ravens has been uh, wounded today. They've been out hit and outplayed. Well, I think uh, the guys uh, should be mindful of the fact we saw Gene Washington, who's here participating in the punt, pass, and kick. Gene in charge of uh, the players in the league and uh, meeting out fines and things of that nature. So. Guys, I'd be cognizant of the fact that the administration is here. Commissioner Tagliabue is in attendance as well. No time to be trading blows unless you brought your checkbook. Well, that brings up fourth down and the Ravens' strength. Jermaine Lewis back on the field. And the line punt by Miller toward the sidelines to the seven. Why? And Lewis, not enough uh, room to roam that time, bumped out of bounds at the 17. Go back to the fumble, Dan. Okay, let's do it. Ray Lewis, of course, flowing from the middle linebacker, and Amos Arroway trying. It looked like he awkwardly caught his legs underneath him as he was trying to make a cut back to the inside. It looked like it distracted him to the point where he just didn't control the football. And Ray Lewis, even though sliding by Zaraway, still. Enough of an athlete, enough presence of mind to get in there, take a swipe at the ball, and get it. How did Carnell Lake not oh. recover the fumble? How did Ray Lewis knock it out going that far, overrunning the play by that much? Steeler fans trying to help out as Gerbach on the draw. Hands off to Mo Williams, who gets about three out to the 20 yard line. Aaron Smith, who has been very quiet in terms of his national. Uh, Publicity, but this 293 pounder out of northern uh, Colorado has been a, quite a contributor for the Steelers all season. Gerbach into the flat, and uh, uh, Mo Williams uh, able to get back to the line of scrimmage, and that's it. Lee Flowers made the tackle. Flowers, who makes a connection to uh, the ex Steeler great at safety, Donnie Shell, who had 51. Interceptions in his terrific career. Shell actually coached Flowers for two years in high school. Elvis has got to try to get down the field somehow. Draws to Moe. This isn't going to get it done. Down the field has a man open. Travis Taylor with a very, oh no, it's Brandon Stokely with a tough catch, twisting away. And Stokely gives uh, the Ravens a first down near midfield. Good catch is right, Dick, with a ball that was thrown back behind him. That very easily could have been an incompletion. First, the, the Ravens have got to stretch the field here. They're running out of time. That was their first third down conversion. This one goes underneath to Shannon Sharp for about eight with uh, Mike Jones making the stop. And now the hurry up for Gerbach and the Ravens trailing by 17 with 545 to go. They have two timeouts left. Underneath and wide open is the running back Mo Williams and Williams to the 30 yard line in the first down and quickly another play call by Gerbach. Lee Flowers making that last hit and a little dazed as he uh, staggers off the field. Replaced by Myron Bell at safety. And uh, Pittsburgh with that injury uh, will be charged with a timeout. Well, the way it all uh, develops here, uh, we don't know exactly what the times will be. It's not been announced, but the championship game, uh, Pittsburgh goes on to win this one. Of course, we'll be here earning the home field advantage with a Amazing New England Patriots, that remarkable story. Bill Belichick's team and Tom Brady would be here for the AFC title match. And of course, so will our NFL Today crew. Jim Nance will uh, get that limousine already, put on his cap, and drive that group on over here to Western Pennsylvania. And uh, should something totally unexpected happen here, and the Ravens uh, pull the rabbit out of the hat, then it would be Baltimore going to New England. From the 30, first down. Gerbach. 
Whistles that one complete to Ismail, and he has his first catch of the game. Good for eight yards. Dwayne Washington with a tackle. Five minutes and counting. They're back complete. And Travis Taylor. Knocked out of bounds by Dwayne Washington, has the first down at the 15. And really, Elvis being forced in this situation at the short end of the field to throw the shorter ones as Pittsburgh is dropping back into a deep zone, trying to keep everything in front of them. Gerbach to the end zone. Incomplete and intercepted. It deflected off, and here comes Brent Alexander, his second pick of the game. And down at the 30, and now they can celebrate in Pittsburgh. They're going to be home another weekend. Travis Taylor trying to make a juggling catch, and in his effort, pitched it right to Alexander. Elvis Gerback has not gotten a lot of help from his receivers today. That should have been a touchdown. Delivers a ball right onto the hands of Travis Taylor. And like we have seen all day, very unsure with their hands have been the Baltimore Raven receivers. Alexander, along with Chad Scott with interceptions, also a fumble recovery, four turnovers by Baltimore. <laughs> to the 30. You and I only have so you many. and 30,000 people go fool at the same time. I decided last night I had five Fua Matu Ma'afalas in me. So for, I, I, I've uh, spent no. them all. I'm going fool. Good call. I'm not the right. No, no. I'm with you here. I'm telling right. you. You make the call and you hear 30,000 people. People echo your call. Fool. It's got to be quick. That's all. Well, some questions for the Steelers here, Dick. As they get ready for next week, one Earl Holmes. Uh, well, what's the status of him for next week? Jerome Bettis, of course, because this has been a remarkably healthy football team. Oh, has it? Oh, actually, if Bettis would have started today, we'll see what happens here. Ooh, ooh. And uh, rips his way out to the 38, where it'll be third and two. They were expecting Jerome Bettis to start today, and if Bettis would have started this game. Their entire starting football team, with the exception of Mark Bruner, their starting tight end that they lost and had to put on IR because of a shoulder back in November, it would have been the same to, since they've had since opening day. And isn't that a recurring theme every sure, year yeah. at this time? Yeah. The ones that move on in the playoffs are often the healthiest. Well, there's being healthy and then there's being really healthy. And up until today, the Steelers were very healthy. Last time the Steelers hosted the AFC Championship game, January 11th, 98. They went up early, but four costly Steeler turnovers would eventually do them in as the Broncos would prevail 24 21. John Elway and company would go on to win Super Bowl 32. Well, that may be the same Cordell Stewart that we saw walking off the field, maybe in body, but in terms of the quality of the player. A vastly different Cordell Stewart quarterbacking this Steeler team now. And emphasizing just that point with his play again today. The timeout was Baltimore's second use today. And Foo protecting the ball. Burrows to the 40 and may have the first down with that second effort. He was stopped a good yard, yard and a half from the first down. And I think he got it again just by strength and his will. And we have seen this Raven defense, I think, really try valiantly today, but they are just flat worn out. The time of possession today, so, so staggeringly in favor of the Steelers. And the rushing yards, you get down to the playoff games, and they say, who runs it the best? Who defends it the best? The Steelers own that number one category during the regular season. And today, 156 yards rushing, Baltimore 22. 
Well, a reminder tonight on CBS 60 Minutes, then the education of Max Bickford with Richard Dreyfus and the Sunday movie, The President's Man, with Chuck Norris as the President's Man. Uh, hopefully, what's not lost in this defeat today was the, just the fabulous run that the Ravens had last year. The way they overpowered everybody that they played all the way through the Super Bowl win over the Giants. It was, uh, it, it wasn't happening for them this year. Yeah, but it's still a magical time that they had last year. But it appears to be over. And the hit in the backfield is the entire Raven defense zeroing in on Foo that time. Jamie Sharper was there first. And coming up on the Subway post game show, Jim Mike, Randy Jerry, recap of today's game and a preview of the NFC Divisional playoff game between Green Bay and St. Louis. That's coming up on the Subway post game show. And the Packers and the Rams, uh, we send our best wishes to those two fine organizations. Yeah, how about that matchup? Kurt Warner, Marshall Falk, Brett Favre, Antonio Freeman, Amon Green. A lot of star power in that Green Bay uh, St. Louis game. Now you can't get a marquee big enough to put all the stars on it. No. Cool. And while we have seen the elements certainly come into play yesterday, both in Chicago and last night in Foxborough, today a nice day, but they'll be on the fast track in the dome at St. Louis. Well, time to salute the leaders for the Pittsburgh Steelers today, Cordell Stewart. A touchdown, an interception, but uh, his legs many times getting the Steelers out of trouble and picking up first downs. They're away. Chips in with 63 yards. Uh, Flexico Burris, 84 yards on five catches and a touchdown. But what's not on that page? Defense. And there's the real stars of this Pittsburgh outfit. They've lost only once on their home field all year. Baltimore beating them. And Chris Brown unable to connect on four field goals, but they've sought revenge today. And just chewing up the final seconds and minutes of this game down to the two minute warning at 158. Pittsburgh uh, getting ready for next week already. <laughs> a little knee replacement, everybody ought to get one every That's right. Well, I would have sent you flowers, but you would have been insulted. I know that. So <laughs> we all wish you well, Dad. Uh, thank all you, right. Dick. You know what I'm reminded of as I watched this performance today of the Pittsburgh Steelers was Bill Cower telling us about how important continuity is in the National Football oh, League. He says money can buy you a championship in basketball, in baseball, but it can't buy you a championship in football. And as you see the coaching derby, everybody coming and going, I think back to Cower finishing his 10th year here in Pittsburgh who a couple of years ago went through a seven and nine and a six and ten season and Dan Rooney stayed the course because he knew he had a good coach and and you know what now they're reaping reaping the benefits he's now the dean of uh, NFL coaches and uh, Dan Rooney following in the footsteps of his Hall of Fame dad Art Rooney bought this franchise in 1933 keeping a uh, that continuity and there's something consistent as well Joey Porter with a sack Blitzburg uh, started early and they cap it with a little exclamation point here in the final two minutes their third sack of the game. And Bill Cower even looked as a yeah I know and under many circumstances around the league I would have been on the street. Yes, they he let did. me go. He just said, I'd have been out. Gerbach, desperation time, almost intercepted, double covered. Was a Todd Heap and uh, Mike Logan looking for the pick. And coming up right after the conclusion of this game, you'll get the comments uh, from the players on the Subway post game show. And of course, our expert analyst back in New York will uh, give you their views. Also, look ahead to. That uh, Rams game with the Packers and uh, the Patriots and the Steelers. What they think about the AFC Championship matchup here next week? Elvis batted down by Mike Jones. 119 to go. You mentioned Cordell Stewart wanting to go to the Super Bowl, being held down in New Orleans. I know that later today, that same thought being held by Marshall Falk. Whose hometown is New Orleans? That would be some matchup, wouldn't it? <laughs> Wonder who would get the most, uh, who'd have to get the most tickets for that game. And we bid a fond farewell to 
Tony Saragusa. The goose uh, said this is it. I suspect we've not seen the last. <laughs> I just hope the booth is, I hope the booth is big enough. <laughs> Richardson and Edwards says stay away and then he uh, takes it just kneels down at the 49 yard line. Saragossa and the Ravens come over to congratulate the Steelers. That was a good run. They did it with their defense. And they thought they had it lined up. Brian Billick the way it was a year ago as a wild card on the road where they prevailed using that great defense. But the Steelers certainly were the better team today. And uh, back to the drawing board for a coming year. This is the. This is the part of the season no coach no player looks to looks forward to. And as we look to the AFC championship game at the start of the year I think it was unlikely that we thought the two quarterbacks in that game were going to be Cordell Stewart and Tom Brady. Wow is that a good call. Yeah. Yeah Kurt Warner Brett Favre and uh, on the other side and Donovan, Donovan McNabb. Donovan, yeah Donovan we're McNabb. seeing familiar names. But certainly not the AFC. Cordell Stewart and Tom Brady. My oh my oh my. And I'll tell you, the terrible towel will never go out of fashion in Blitzburg. <laughs> Heinz Ward in the backfield had a towel with him. The Pittsburgh Steelers have advanced to the AFC Championship game. Bill Cowers, tough, tough defensive team with an impressive 27-10 win over the Baltimore Ravens. And uh, our congratulations to Brian Billick and the, and the Ravens as well and to their owner, Art Modell. Art, good luck with the Hall of Fame voting. I uh, know you're disappointed today, but you're, they all go home wearing those Super Bowl rings. And for... Dan Rooney and the Pittsburgh Steelers in this city and their great fans. Uh, congratulations uh, to a team that played the way.